thank God for today that we have life. And we can celebrate the life even if you are sick. No matter where you are, you're alive, you opened your eyes this morning, or you didn't even open your eyes, but you are breathing. And you're able to hear these words, then celebrate. Know that God can reach you anyhow, anytime, anywhere. Today we are going to read Genesis chapter 13. Genesis chapter 13. And we are going to read from verse 10 to verse 13. Genesis 13, 10 to 13. And Lord lifted his eyes and saw all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as you go towards Zohar. Then Lord chose for himself all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated from each other. And Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent even as far as Sodom. But the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. All that glitters is not gold. That is what the Englishman will say. All that glitters indeed is not gold. A thing can glitter so well, look so wonderful, but underneath is a different thing. We have such experiences. You even meet people on the surface that are wonderful, beneath, oh, they are the most wicked of the wicked. That's the way life is. So what you see on the surface should not determine how you act. Yes, they got to a situation, Abraham told Lord, this little boy, as it were, make a choice. Take a direction, I'll go in the next direction. And he looked up and saw where it was wonderful. That wonderful was disastrous. There was something wrong underneath. The men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful. Although the grass looked wonderful, the land looked wonderful, the vegetation was beautiful, the other side was a desert. He thought he made the best choice. He never knew he was walking into exceeding wickedness and sinfulness. The next time you want to make a choice, let God decide for you. Let not the things you see make the decisions for you. But you see how we live? We live by the things we see. That's the way you see the situation. That's the way you understand it, so you fall into it. It doesn't matter to you what God says about that situation you are in. If Lord maybe had prayed and asked God for a direction, he probably would not have gone there. He pitched his tent as far as Sodom. That would mean that he had extended his territory so large. He got to the ends of it. But he never knew that he had gotten steep into trouble. And that trouble became a real trouble for him in his later years. At the time, he should have relaxed. Everything got wrong because of the choice that he made. Some of us have made choices that have ended us in regret till now. And I want you to understand that that regret can change even today. Because anyway, when you realize that you've made a choice, not by God, then go back to God and ask for his mercy. Some of us have chosen wives and husbands that we should not have chosen. Some of us have gotten to work where we should not work. There are some things we could reverse. There are some things we could not reverse. What if you made a choice of a wrong wife or a wrong husband? What would you do? You will terminate it because you made a wrong choice? No but you ask for the mercies of God to turn things around for you. Because there is nothing the Lord cannot do. We sing that all the time, there's nothing the Lord cannot do, and that's the truth. With God, all things are possible. But having said that, that doesn't mean that you're going to the next decision with your eyes closed and say, oh, the Lord will change it. No. For the scripture says, if we deliberately do the things that we do wrong, there is no forgiveness for it. But if you did it in ignorance, as the scripture says, in the days of ignorance, the Lord blinks. Then you can always get back to him. And so many of us have gotten into trouble. But what of the trouble that you got into deliberately without referring to God? Somehow it could be the days of ignorance because some of us don't even know that we can refer to God in everything. Even those of us who know still somehow think that, oh, that other aspect, no, it's not necessary to refer to God. But let's learn the life of reference to God in everything. 
so that we can minimize the amount of trouble that we bring ourselves into and the ones we bring upon ourselves and our households. We suffer so many things because of decisions. And some of us allow others to take decisions for us. Whatever they say, we do. Everybody is doing it that way, so you join. Did you ask God if what everybody is doing is right? As the scripture would say, it is wrong to follow the multitude and do the wrong. But we follow the multitude because that's what everybody is doing. That's what the pastor is doing. That's what the prayer band people are doing, so you join. No? Ask God each time you want to take a decision. God said, if you ask, then there will be an answer. Jesus said, ask, seek, and knock. Ask. And if you do ask, God will answer you. If indeed you ask sincerely. Some of us ask for the sake of asking. So it won't be like, I didn't ask God, oh, Father, what should I do? And there's no answer. I said, well, I asked God. God didn't answer. God sees your heart more than your mouth. God knows your thoughts before you even start thinking them. So watch, if you have a devotion, single-minded devotion to God, such that the thing is genuinely referred to God, you will almost certainly have an answer each time you ask, depending on the life you live. If you live that life that God turns away from you, the Lord cannot behold iniquity. So will he respond to you? But if you live that life that God sees you continually, ask, and he will give you direction for everything. He said the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. He will teach you all things, give you all knowledge, and tell you the things to come. That is everything complete. Nothing is left out. Let's get back to God. Let's not make the mistakes that were made before. What we find in the scriptures are examples for us to learn from, either to stay away from such things or to do the ones that enhance our relationship with God. Learn from the scriptures. Don't act without asking from God, and God is willing to answer you. Father, thank you for everyone that will ask to receive an answer and help everyone that wants to change the style of life, that they will live in the direction that you accept, that when they speak, you will answer them. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Yeah.